as we travel through the weeks of Eastertide, one thing strikes me particularly. It is that the friends who'd known Jesus so well didn't even recognize him after the resurrection. Mary Magdalene, meeting him in the garden, thinks he's the local gardener. The two disciples walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus don't realize that it's Jesus walking alongside them. Peter and the others out fishing are bewildered to see him standing on the shore. St. John tells us, no one dared ask him, who are you? Even doubting Thomas isn't convinced that he's standing in front of Jesus until he's invited to feel the wounds of crucifixion. Isn't it strange that in all these accounts of Jesus' resurrection appearances, the friends who'd known him intimately didn't even recognize him. Why were they so unsure? Well, we don't have an answer to that question. The Gospels don't explain why the disciples had trouble recognizing Jesus once he was risen from death. Was it, I wonder, because those who'd known him so very well as Jesus from Nazareth now had to come to know him as Christ, the King, their risen Lord, come to know him as their God. Did they have to learn that now he was no longer held in an earthly body? He might come to them at any time, in any place, and possibly in ways and forms they wouldn't immediately recognize. Did they have to learn, perhaps, to recognize him in other people, particularly those who needed their help and their love. That's presumably what he meant by the parable of the last judgment, when the king says to those who have cared for others, as you have done it for the least of these my brothers, you have done it for me. That too is what the legend of St. Christopher is about, the story of the ferryman who carried a little boy across the river in a terrible storm, only to find the child growing heavier and heavier as he struggled across, until he finally put the boy down on the bank and discovered he'd been carrying the risen Christ. An important aspect of Eastertide, I believe, is recognizing Jesus in other people. It's about showing our love for Jesus by responding to people who need our help, our care, our concern. And of course, it's also about recognizing him in those who show us love and care and being thankful for it. Like any Christian congregation, we have three priorities, each of them fulfilling one of Jesus' commands. First, to show our love and thanks to God by regularly breaking bread and sharing wine together. As he said, do this in remembrance of me. Second, to build together a community of love and care. As he also said, by this will all people know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. And third, to share the good news of God's unconditional love for all of us, carrying out his command, go and make disciples of all the nations. This Eastertide, because of the pandemic, churches have had to find new and ingenious ways of honoring those three priorities. I am absolutely full of admiration for Father Bob, for the ministry team, and for the wider team of lay helpers who are doing such an amazing job. I pray God to bless those efforts and to bless us all as we continue to celebrate Eastertide in such very strange and testing times.